Hi. USB soldering irons seem to be pretty popular in the hobbyist community, so we've got one that I've not looked at before. Today we're looking at the Secure S60, and this is a JVC style USB soldering iron that takes the C210 type cartridges. Let's have a quick look at it on the website. So you can either buy it directly from the Secure store, or you can also buy it from their AliExpress store, and I'll put links to both of these in the description down below. There's a few different options that you can pick from, either with three C210 style cartridges or just one, uh, depending on the style that you're after. And it's coming in at about $50 plus shipping from their store, or on AliExpress, about £44 including delivery. And this one is designed to work from a wide range of power supplies, power delivery 2, 3 and quick charge 2 and 3, up to a maximum of 12 volts input. And this particular Soldier 9 is rated for 60 watts, although I'm not sure if you can actually get 60 watts out of these little cartridges. So let's have a look at what the scope of delivery is. Well, first of all, you get this nice carry case so that you can keep your USB Soldier 9 nice and safe. Then you get a USB power supply. Now, there's only two options here. It's either a European-style connector or a US one. And it has got some approvals on the side here. Uh, but basically, this one looks to be rated for about... Uh, 15 maybe 18 watts it's uh, 3 amps at 5 volts 2 amps at 9 volts or 1.5 amps at 12 volts so we're not going to get 60 watts out of the soldier iron uh, with this particular charger that comes with it uh, but this is quite compact and feels like it's reasonably well made uh, then quite nicely you do actually get a little stand because one of the problems that I find with some of the other USB soldering irons is you're probably kind of expected just to rest it on your desk and that's very easy to cause problems. So this one is designed to sit on your bench. You've got a tiny little sponge here uh, and then you can rest the soldier iron on the little cradle just here. We'll have a look in the soldering iron in just a moment. But then we also get a USB cable. So it's a USB-C connector on the soldering iron. This one has a USB-A connector there on the other end. Uh, in this case, I've got the one with three tips. So we'll take a look at those and we'll measure the resistance and see whether we can actually use this with some genuine JVC cartridges or whether we're going to run into some issues. Now, in terms of the 60 watt rating, I think probably what they're saying here is the internal driver can drive up to 60 watts on the output. So we'll take some measurements again and see uh, whether we can actually get that. We've got some stickers as well as an instruction book. And then we have the soldering iron itself, and we'll take a closer look at that in just a moment. So this video is sponsored by PCBWay, and PCBWay are pretty much your one-stop shop for all your home and professional projects. As you know, you can get prototype and advanced PCBs manufactured here for extremely competitive prices. They also offer PCB assembly services where you can get your components assembled onto the boards, offering both single and double-sided loads. You can also get mechanical parts made, so CNC, machining, 3D printing, as well as sheet metal folding. And then we have the PCBWay community, where people like you can share your really interesting projects with other people and allow them to replicate it themselves. You can upload your project into the various categories, uh, for example, LEDs, displays and matrices. Click on a project that is of interest to you. And as you can see here, you can order just the PCB or you can order it fully assembled from PCBWay and have it shipped to your door. So that's PCBWay services. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some parts made. So a close-up of the Soldier 9, and it's really quite a compact device. It's quite nice looking. Uh, now, it is made from plastic. It's not metal like some of the other USB Soldier 9s, but it seems to be pretty well built. And it's also quite compact, which is quite nice. So if you compare it to the Metcal Ultra Fine Handpiece, which is probably the smallest commercial handpiece that you're going to get, um, it's very similar in size to that. And we've got where we put the cartridge in the end here, so that's very similar to a standard JVC handpiece. We've got two push buttons and we've got an OLED on the front here. And then we just have a USB-C connector on the end with a maximum input voltage of 12 volts. And then just on the underside, we've got one screw. Uh, and I notice there's one screw here. So perhaps we can have a quick look inside. Uh, but it seems quite nicely built. And if we put in one of the cartridges that comes with it, it seems to slide in quite well. And that feels quite comfortable if you're trying to do some soldering with it. In terms of the little cradle, we've got this little area for the sponge and then this flip-up wire metal part. 
And the idea is that basically you can rest the soldier nine just there like that uh, to save you having it very close to your workbench where some of the other soldier nines don't include any kind of stand. And removing that screw did allow me to take the back cover off. So let's have a quick look at this under the microscope. So looking closely, we've got the spring contacts that make contact with the Stolger 9 cartridge. So three contacts there. Then we've got a 15 amp N channel MOSFET, the WSP4409A. Looks like we've also got some kind of fuse there, possibly a buzzer. A few discrete parts and capacitors. And we've obviously got a DC to DC converter there, probably the 3 volt regulator for the display. And then here we've got an HUSB 238, which is a 100 watt power delivery controller. So that connects to the USB C port and then gives you your power output that is basically being used to drive the heating element on the Soldier 9. So that's all there is on that side. Let's see if we can get it apart a little bit further. And so on the other side of the board, again, we've got those spring contacts that are soldered to the board and they make good contact with the cartridge version 1.8 of the PCB it looks like. Then we've got a tactile switch, a couple of passives. We've got this GS8332 precision op amp, so that's for reading the temperature from the thermocouple. Then we've got the OLED, and you might just be able to see that we've got a TQFP package under there, which is obviously going to be an STM32 style device. That seems to be pretty standard for these units. A couple more passives under there. And then we have another tactile switch and then the threaded insert that the screw that holds it together is screwed into. So quite a nicely made little PCB there, nothing really too concerning. And we have got the protection as well. So this looks like quite a nicely made Soldier 9. Now for once with one of these USB Soldier 9s that has a potentially quite limiting user interface just using these two tactile switches and the OLED, they actually give you an instruction manual and it's actually quite well made um, with the pine sill for example it didn't come with anything it wasn't obvious how you use any of the features you're expected to go on the website and try and uh, find where all of the details are when really for the majority of users they just want to have a user manual that says this is what it does and where you need to look for various things so what they've done is they've mapped out the display and they tell you what each of the things means so for example up at the top here when it's turned on it will say work stop or sleep and obviously that says whether the Soldier 9 is on, off, or in sleep mode. Uh, and then we've got some of the things about the warning, high voltage warning, temperature, low voltage. It does have an under voltage cutoff there. It tells you what the supply voltage is, as well as the Soldier 9 temperature, and a few other things. Also, it's got a bar graph to show you how much power it's delivering into the cartridge. So that's all really quite nice. And they includes an actual description as well, which is well worth looking at. And then they also include... A description of the menus because sometimes they're not 100% clear what each of the things is and on I think on the pine sill it did scroll with what it was but you know it's not quite as easy as just looking at a sheet of paper that just explains what everything is so it tells you um, we've got temperature compensation which allows us to calibrate the temperature turn the buzzer on and off uh, the temperature units degrees C or degrees F uh, the operating temperature and we've got all of these other things here like sleep time, standby time, sensitivity because it does have an accelerometer in it uh, which allows it to go to sleep when you're not soldering but when you pick it up it tries to heat up the Soldier 9 cartridge quite quickly. Um, and then we've got things like display brightness, the direction so depending on whether you're left handed or right handed the display could be upside down so you can switch that there. And it also switches between the buttons as well if you don't like the way it works you can switch those buttons around with the option here and then you can also set the low voltage protection so if you're powering this from straight from lithium batteries for example and you want to enable some protection so you don't over discharge them you can do that with this menu item here and again we've got another type of calibration just here so all of the details are here which means i probably won't go through all of the details on the Soldier 9 itself because it's quite nicely written here. Let's quickly measure the heater resistance. So this is one of the cartridges that came with the Soldier 9 and that's coming in at about 2.4 ohms. And then we've got a genuine JBC here. So the C210024 and we'll connect that up in the same way. 
and that reads 1.9 ohms. So for any given supply voltage, we should get slightly more power out of the genuine JBC, but it looks like that's within the limits of what this solder nine can deliver. All right, let's power it up. We're using the supplied USB power supply and cable, version 1.10 of the firmware. And then as you can see, we've got the current temperature of the solder nine cartridge. We've got the set point, which is 300 degrees C, and it's currently in stop mode, so it's not heating the cartridge, and we're supplying it with 12.2 volts. So we press this button here to start heating it up, and that changes to work. And then you can see we're basically at temperature already, which means we should be able to melt a bit of solder on the end of the cartridge here. Let's have a quick look at the calibration. So we're currently at 300 degrees C. Let's see what that does on the calibrator. And there we go, just about two, maybe three degrees under. We can change the temperature with the two buttons. Currently it's set to 10 degree steps, but you can change the step size to whatever you wish. So 350 degrees C now. And again, that's basically at 350 degrees C. So it seems like the calibration is in good order on here. Now to get to the user menu, I think you press the two buttons together. Oh no, you press this button for two seconds. And they separated out the menu items into these groups. So as you saw there, we had iron, idle, which is standby, OLED, so that things to do with the display, voltage, all that kind of stuff, which is quite nice. So it's separated out into sensible categories. And then we can scroll through those by using the two buttons and if we want to enter one we hold down the button on the right and then that's how we go through so we've got the buzzer on we're in degree c working temperature when you power it up is 300 degrees c at the moment when you first power it up it'll always keep the cartridge off until you tell it uh, factory settings temperature shield you know the step uh, the power and that kind of stuff. So quite a self-explanatory menu, but as I said, the user menu uh, manual had all of the details anyway. So I think we're ready to do a little bit of soldering. We'll try first of all with the tip that came with it, and then we'll switch it out for the JBC and see if that works as well. <laughs> Now the JBC cartridge is a little bit small for the 0.7mm solder, but we'll try it anyway. So that's the Secure S60 Soldier 9 and it seems to work quite nicely and the ability to use genuine JBC C210 cartridges in a Soldier 9 that seems to be quite nicely built is really quite good because I have a problem with the Soldier 9s like the uh, Pine Sill and also the Miniware ones in that you've only got a very limited selection of tips available by opening up the JBC style cartridges then it's more likely to be used for some better quality soldering. So I do quite like this, and it's at a pretty decent price point. They do also do a 20 watt version, but I don't see any reason why you'd bother going for that one. You may as well go for the 60, and there is a power limit that you can implement in the user interface anyway, uh, so you may as well go for that. So I'll put a link in the description down below. Big thank you to our sponsor for this video, PCBWay. Don't forget to visit them if you're thinking about getting some parts made. Any thoughts and comments, leave them in the comments section down below. 
And until next time, thanks for watching.